All right, and welcome back. So today we are going to be talking about how to solve one-step equations. In the first half of this video, we're going to be talking about how to solve by adding or subtracting. In the second half of this video, we're going to be talking about how to solve by multiplying or dividing. So please have out your guided notes that correspond to these sections, and let's begin. So we can use counters to model solving equations. And I know that some of you are going to see this and think, wow, this is so basic, right? But that's okay. We're going to go down to the fundamentals and make sure we have a strong foundation. That way we understand what and why we're doing. That way we can grow best mathematically. So we can use counters to model these equations. So let's say we want to solve x plus 2 is equal to 5. We want to figure out, hey, what value of x satisfies this equation, right? And mentally in your head, you can think of, oh, well, what number plus 2 gives me 5? And you can probably already know it's 3. But we're soon going to start to see more complicated and more complex equations. So understanding the fundamentals and the basics is going to be very beneficial for us to move forward this year in algebra. So we can model by using counters, and we can model it correspondingly by using numbers. So if we have x plus 2 is equal to 5, well, that's x plus 2 counters is equal to 5 counters. If we want to get rid of the counters that are operating with our variable, well, we remove 2 on the left, which means we have to keep things balanced. We remove 2 on the right-hand side. And using numbers, we subtract 2 on both sides. So now we end up with x technically plus 0 is equal to 3 counters, or x plus 0 is equal to 3 and the reason that it's plus zero is because, well, two minus two is zero. And typically we're gonna skip this step, but it's good to understand why we're doing what we are doing, which means that X has to end up being three. And whenever we talk equations, especially this year, it's gonna be so beneficial to check our work. So we just wanna double check and make sure that three plus two does indeed equal five. Again, we're gonna be seeing some very complex equations this year. So checking with these more basic equations for lack of better terms is gonna help us in the long run to establish this um, fundamental idea that we have to check our work. So with this, please work on problems one through five on the guided notes, flip it over and resume when you're ready to move on. So any addition equation can be solved by adding the opposite. If the equation involves subtraction, it helps to first rewrite the subtraction as addition. Now, this is one way to go about solving these types of problems. You might have another way that you're comfortable with, and that's totally okay. But I'm just going to go through one way to have a general understanding as to what the purpose is in how we solve these equations. So if we have we, x plus 4 is equal to 10, we want to find the opposite of this number. We want to find the opposite of 4. And the opposite of 4 is negative 4. So technically, we're going to add negative 4 to each side. Now, we also will say we're going to subtract 4 on each side because 4 plus negative 4 is the same as 4 minus 4. It's the same thing, 6 to 1, half a dozen the other. And we find that x is equal to 6. And we can check our work, make sure that 10 does indeed equal 10. If we have negative 5 is equal to x minus 8, again, we want to find the opposite of this number. Well, we're going to rewrite it as addition. You have x plus negative 8, and the opposite of negative 8 is 8. So we're going to add 8 to each side. Now, typically, a lot of students will not do this step here. Typically, a lot of students will not rewrite, and that's okay. If you see it as, I know I have to add 8 on both sides, that's totally fine. You do you, but we, again, we want to talk about the understanding of why we do what we do. Let me find that x is equal to 3. We check our work. Boom, there we go. Let's say we have x minus negative 6 is equal to 2. We want to rewrite as addition, and this is, this is good in this scenario because we have minus a negative and we don't like to have double signs especially in algebra this year we do not want to have double signs so as we change it from x minus negative six into x plus six it also is going to simplify it for us too because now we see x plus six so we know the opposite of positive six is negative six therefore we're going to add negative six to both sides or even just subtract six whichever way you are most comfortable, and we find that x is equal to negative 4, which is great. So with this in mind, please work on problems 6 through 11 on the guided notes, and that's going to complete solving by adding and subtracting. 
When you're ready to move on, please turn over to solving by multiplying or dividing, and let's go through those notes. So we can solve equations involving multiplication and division by performing the inverse operation. So let's say we have x divided by 5 is equal to 4. Well, the first thing we want to identify is x is getting divided by 5. So the current operation is division. So we're going to use multiplication. We're going to multiply both sides by 5. When we do that, we can simplify down and we get that x is equal to 20. And as we said before, especially in algebra with, with equations, we always want to check our work to make sure it is correct. It's going to be the best way to know that you are doing it properly. And likewise, if we have negative 3x is equal to 27, we're going to establish and understand that x is getting multiplied by negative 3. Therefore, we're going to have to divide both sides by negative 3, the inverse operation, and we get that x is going to be equal to negative 9. And again, we can always check our work and make sure that it is correct. Perfect. With this in mind, please work on problems 1 through 5 on the guided notes and turn it on over when you're ready to move on. All right, an equation with fractions can be solved by multiplying by what's called the reciprocal. You're going to be hearing this a lot this year, this keyword reciprocal. So if we want to solve 2 over 3x is equal to 8. We want to multiply 2 over 3 by x. That's what's going to be equal to 8. And we want to figure out the reciprocal here. We identify that we're currently getting multiplied by 2 over 3. We're going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is 3 over 2. We flip the fraction. So we're going to multiply both sides by 3 over 2, which means we're going to have x is equal to 24 over 2, or x is just equal to 12. As always, we check our work to make sure that we do have the correct answer, and looks like we do, so we are sound here. So now we're going to solve. We have negative 3 fourths x is equal to 2 fifths, 2 fractions. But that's all right. We're going to stick to what we know. We're identifying that x is getting multiplied by negative 3 over 4, which means we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is negative 4 over 3. We keep the same sign. We flip that fraction. Therefore, when we simplify, we get that x is going to be equal to negative 8 over 15. We double check our work, make sure that we have our correct answer. And that, kiddos, is how we solve one-step equations. With this in mind, please work on problems 6 through 11 on your guide and notes. Please let me know if you have any questions, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks.